Good morning, friends. Um, Dan Weimara here at Push Press. I want to go over something that just came out with the PPP loan um, guidance and documentation that has gotten a lot of you guys freaked out for good cause. And I want to give you my opinion on it. And I haven't been able to get this verified by any lender yet, but um, I just want to at least put this information out now because I'm getting asked it from every direction. Um, so let's talk about this. Um, <clears throat> the question is basically, has the PPP loan program been adjusted to only allow full-time employees because there's verbiage in there that talks about full-time employees. I'm going to read that verbiage um, directly so you can understand. Um, looking for it right now. Okay, so do I need to, it's, it's in the what do I need to certify section. Uh, you will need to pro provide to your lender documentation that verifies the number of full-time equivalent employees on your payroll and the dollar amounts of payroll costs covered, blah, blah, blah. That verbiage is also mentioned in the loan forgiveness area where it says how much of a loan may be forgiven, number of staff, your loan forgiveness will be reduced if you decrease your full-time employee headcount. <clears throat> now, this is why these things get crazy and hard to understand because on one hand they talk about a full-time equivalent employee and on the second one they talk about a full-time employee. Let's talk about full-time equivalent um, employees. This is a very common term that is used um, in IRS documentation and other, other governmental sources. And if you Google it, it basically refers to normalizing into a standard unit's the number of things that you have. Um, and a lot of times, like in school, they talk about credits and they, it's normalized the number of hours you're in class per week and it's the number of credits you're taking. For full-time employee, um, for, for this count, they basically want to know what your normalized or standardized number of full-time employees is. So the way that this would read as a full-time, let me actually find the exact wording again. Um, where did it go? Full-time equivalent employee. If you had eight coaches coaching one hour classes five times a week, that would be 40 hours a week or one full-time equivalent employee. That does not mean that you have to have one person working 40 hours, okay? It, it could and should mean you, you could have an, a various number of people working the equivalent of 40 hours. So the way you can think about that is if you have, if you have 60 hours of work that you're paying people to do a week, that's 1.5 full-time equivalent employees. This isn't rounded to a whole number necessarily. Again, this all needs to be verified with a lender and we need to make sure this is all true. This is my interpretation of it today and I'm just answering it this way because I'm getting asked a hundred times from different ways. Um, <clears throat> my interpretation of this entire loan guidance is they're still basing your loan based on the amount of money you spend on payroll, right? they're still basing your forgiveness based on the amount of money that you're spending on payroll. But I think that they want to know is your full-time equivalent employees, because that's going to be the standard that they measure if you're adding or, or reducing work in your gym, the number of hours someone's working. They want, I think they want to make sure you're not giving raises to people like cutting the number of people and giving somebody more money as opposed to hiring as many or more people and um, keeping them employed. So that's why I think that it's being worded this way. Um, this wording I think got changed sometime late last night. Um, today is April 1st, no April Fool's jokes here. So I think that's, like I said, these, these wordings are changing minute by minute, hour by hour. So we're just doing our best to try and keep up with it. That's my opinion of it. I don't think you have to have full-time employees. I do think it's just trying to keep track of how many man hours are being worked per week in your facility. Um, the other question that came up was, it looks like now 1099 employees are not, in cov not, are not covered. Um, and I do agree with that reading this. It looks like they only want to work with W2 employees. Um, and what I'm hearing around, around the way on this is it's because 1099 employees can, and, and um, self-employed people can file for this themselves and they want to make sure they're not double dipping by you getting it on this end for them and them getting it on that end them for themselves. So that's the reason why. So if you have a bunch of 1099 contractors um, in your business, I think 
and again, this all needs to be verified probably with your lender. I would, I would caveat all of this with find your own lender and, and talk to them and ask them. But I think what you need to advise your 1099 people is to, to prepare to file this for themselves. Okay. All right, guys. Um, Thank you. Thank you for all the questions that are coming through. We're doing our best to keep up with them and, and keep everyone with as best information we can. Whenever I see a question with more than like a dozen people asking it, I'm just going to record a video and throw it out there and link to the video because it's just going to be a much more efficient use of my time. All right. See you guys later.